Hi, I'm Dr. John McCallick. I'm an assistant professor of accountancy at University College Dublin. I published a book on introductory financial accounting using IFRS that you can download at the link below. This playlist of videos explains all the important concepts and techniques that are in the book and that you will need to prepare basic financial statements. I've included a, a link to the uh, playlist of videos uh, below as well. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you found this content helpful. Hi, this video is about accounting for equity. As you will have seen in previous videos, Equity is the residual interest in the assets of the entity after deducting all of its liabilities. So equity is what's left over when you deduct liabilities from assets. And we often think of the example of a house. People talk about their equity in a house. If their asset, the house, is worth 500000 and they have a mortgage, their liability of 300000 then they have 200000 of equity in the house and it works in a similar way for a company we look at all the assets the company has subtract the liabilities and by definition the bit that's left over is equal to the equity in uh, the company and the equity is one of the sections in the balance sheet or statement of financial position um, and uh, when the balance sheet balances assets minus liabilities should be equal to equity. Now equity is part of the finance of the business. Finance comes essentially from two different sources. One is from equity, that's from the owners of the business, and that can come through either a direct investment in the business where they buy shares from the company and give the company money for those shares, or it can come indirectly in terms of the profits of the business being retained in the business. And that retention of profit is represented in accounting terms by the retained earnings or retained profits account in the equity section of the balance sheet or statement of financial position. The other type of finance is essentially liabilities funds provided by other parties and the major one we can think of in providing finance to the business is bank loans where uh, banks provide money to the business which is on a completely different basis than equity that li liabilities have to be repaid uh, uh, over time. So how is equity represented in accounts? Uh, I mean, how does equity work and how is it represented in the financial statements? So um, in the financial statements, we will see ordinary uh, share capital um, uh, and that is belong to what are called the ordinary shareholders of uh, the business. Ordinary shareholders have what's called limited liability. And this is where we get into company law a little bit. Um, what is limited liability? Limited liability means that you are only liable for the investment that you make in the business. You're not liable beyond that. So if the business goes bust, owing a lot of money, um, the uh, creditors of the business cannot come back to you and say, oh, you need to put more money into this business uh, because uh, to pay off our debts your liability is limited to your investment. That is not always true. Um, uh, there's exceptions to that in the Companies Acts, but um, it's generally true uh, of, of limited companies. Um, ordinary shareholders are entitled to vote at the company meetings. They vote on the election of the directors. Uh, they vote on the election of the auditor and the appointment of the auditor. Uh, they vote on uh, approving dividends and various other things that they're required to vote on uh, under uh, company law. The ordinary shareholders, those are the owners of the business. Those are the people who are entitled to any residual value in the company. So if the company shuts down and sells off its, all its assets and settles all its liabilities and there's money left over, the people that that is um, uh, due back to 
are the ordinary shareholders of the business. And as I said, they appoint the directors. So they're, the directors are in essence, their representatives who run the business on their behalf. And that's how it's seen uh, by company law. It doesn't always work exactly that way in practice, but uh, that's how uh, company law sees it. And there's more details on all of this in the book um, if you want to uh, read read the chapter in the book on equity. So uh, what else about ordinary or common, uh, the Americans call it common share capital? Dividends, that is the payout to the equity holders in the company, it are at the discretion of the directors. So there isn't like an interest rate or something like that that has to be paid out to the honor, the ordinary shareholders every year. The directors decide what is appropriate to pay out. And that depends on how well the company is doing, what the company's resources are like. Um, and there are some restrictions as well in company law as to how much can be paid out. If, for instance, the company is making losses and things like that, it may not be able to fully uh, 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 pay out. Um, and uh, shares are issued in units. So there's always a unit in relation to shares. And this is called the nominal or par value of the shares. Um, so the nominal or par value, you know, conventionally it's one euro but it can be anything else. In some companies, it's like one cent. Um, a lot of American companies are very low uh, uh, nominal or par values. Now, shares can be issued at above par value. So you could have a one euro share and uh, uh, that has a, a share that has a par value of one euro and you could issue those shares for 10 euro. And in that case, the way we would represent it in, in, in the balance sheet is one euro would go into your ordinary uh, share capital and uh, the other nine euro would go into an account called sh uh, share premium. So the share premium account or in the USA, uh, they call that additional paid in uh, capital. Now, preference shares are a little bit different to ordinary shares. They're kind of halfway between shares and a liability. They're still considered part of equity, but they do have some characteristics that are more like a liability than ordinary shares. Uh, they generally have fixed dividends, um, like it could be 6%, it could be 3% or something like that. Um, uh, dividends can be skipped if the company is unable to pay. Well, now this is something that is different to a liability, like a bank loan. We can skip the preference dividend if the company is unable to pay the preference dividend. Um, if the preference shares are cumulative, then any skip dividends must be paid when the company is, is you know, gets back into good health and is able to pay uh, those dividends. Now, the really important thing about preference shares is down here. They only receive the nominal value of their capital back if the company shuts down. So they only get back, you know, uh, the nominal value of their shares. Uh, they do not share into any value creation in the company, unlike the ordinary shareholders. The ordinary shareholders are the residual holders of the company. They get back any value that's been created in the company, whereas preference shareholders just get back their uh, par value. And they usually can't vote at meetings except uh, for specialized things that concerns preference shares directly. They can't vote on directors and, and, and stuff like that. Um, now, preference shares uh, are not that common nowadays. There are a couple of Irish companies, big Irish companies that still have them on their balance sheet, but generally that's because they were issued, you know, 70 years ago and they're still hanging around there. Um, uh, but um, uh, most companies do not use preference shares as a um, uh, most kind of normal operating companies. There are uses for them in the finance industry um, uh, and, and stuff like that for these kind of custom design shareholding arrangements, but uh, uh, most normal companies don't don't have them anymore. 
Okay. So, um, what is equity made up of then? So let's see what total equity is made up of. It's made up of the equity share capital, and that is the par or nominal value of the shares multiplied by the number of shares in issue. So it's uh, par by the number. I'll try and do a hash sign here for the number. Okay, preference share capital. Well, that is the par value of the preference shares by the number of preference uh, shares in issue. The share premium, that is any excess over par. So it's par plus. So it's any excess over par value that have been uh, that has been um, received uh, for uh, the shares. As that generally relates to ordinary share capital, I think technically under company law it's possible for preference shares, but um, it generally relates to ordinary shares. And then retained income, which we have seen many times before in the balance sheet, and retained income is the profits of the company that have been generated so far in its existence minus any dividends that have been uh, paid out. And later on, when more advanced in accounting, you'll see there's other things that affect retained income as well. But for now, we really have plus profits each year minus dividends uh, each year. And that gives you the balance on retained income. What does it represent? It represents the value that has been created in the company and has been retained in the company and not paid out as dividends. So let's see an example. This is quite old, but I mean, if you look at the, the, the CRH's balance sheet right up to date, you'll see that it's exactly the same, just the numbers have changed. Um, the equity share capital, that is the par value of the shares. The ordinary shares multiplied by the number of shares in issued in issue the preference share capital that's you know 1.2 million that's a tiny amount in relation to crh the share premium account you can see that's an awful lot bigger than the issued share capital if you added these two things together you would get the amount that has been actually invested by the shareholders in in, in the business other reserves, let's not worry about that. And foreign translation, let's not worry about that. Retained income is the other big account, 3.5 billion. That is the um, profits of CUH that has have been accumulating since CUH was founded, minus any dividends that have been uh, paid out. So in terms of a double entry, for equity. So when we issue equity, when share capital is issued, we debit the bank with the amount received from investors. So uh, we've seen the simple version of this transaction already. Um, uh, we debit a bank with the amount that has been received in from the shareholders because that is increasing our bank balance. And we credit equity share capital with the par value of the capital. So if we're issuing one euro shares for every one for every share issued we put one euro into equity share capital and we credit share premium with excess over the par value so um, uh, share premium is increased by the excess so if we're issuing one euro shares but we're getting 10 euro for them we'll put uh, one euro in here for each share issued and we'll put, sorry, nine euro in share premium for every share issued. Okay, so that's straightforward enough. Uh, dividends, how do we account for dividends? They are the returns to the shareholders in the company. They're, as we've seen before, they're at the discretion of the directors for ordinary shares. Um, uh, can only be paid where the company has enough profits available. And there's complicated rules about that, which we're not going to get into. They are not shown in the income statement. And this is important for you when you're preparing uh, financial statements. They are not shown in the income statement. So where do they go? Well, they are deducted directly from retained earnings or retained income. 
when a dividend is paid, we credit the bank because that's real money being paid, being paid out to the shareholders and we debit retained income or retained earnings uh, in the balance sheet. Okay, and this is important for the preparation of financial statements uh, um, uh, later on. Okay, so equity is the owners. There should be a apostrophe there. Interest in the company. It can be directly invested in the company or internally generated when the company makes profits and does not pay them out as uh, dividends. And we've looked at the double entries for issuing new capital and paying dividends on new capital or uh, on, on existing uh, uh, shares. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you found this content helpful. Bye.